So what I have here is some configuration is a Kubernetes cluster, but um, so I'm going to pull this internet from not even Grafana application. This is the other developer that works with me on this project, Mario um, uh, CS. Uh, so he's got this uh, published some gold blog service that is uninstrumented. So this is something random of the internet, if you will, um, an image that we're pulling here. And then I'm going to show you. So this is not instrumented. There's no instrumentation in it. So we're going to, in the same um, Kubernetes cluster, attach something else, which is this Grafana Bela auto instrumentation. So it's all you got to do. So you got to add a conf another, in this case, a sidecar container. Um, we need some privileges because we're going to be touching things inside that are privileged. And we finally have to say, well, this container of Bela, which is going to instrument something, we have to tell it to instrument this um, at port 8443, which is what this service opens up. So this Go blog application, which is a Go application, opens up port 443. And we tell Bela, OK, well, you sh there's some open telemetry related stuff. But we say, when you launch, look for any service in the system that is has opened this port. And once you see it, instrument it, please. That's all we do. So the rest of the stuff is just for debugging. And finally, in this system here, I have Grafana agent I'm going to deploy as well, which is configured to send data to uh, Grafana Cloud. In this case, I'm using Mimmer for my um, metrics, and I'm going to use Tempo for my traces. Um, so this Grafana agent here has a configuration. This is very typical of how the agent is deployed. So in our application here, I'm just telling uh, Bela to send the events to my local agent, and the agent will take care of augmenting those data with anything else on this that it needs and uh, eventually send it to um, uh, Grafana Cloud. Now, we're open source, support so open telemetry, so you don't have to use the Grafana agent if you don't like, you can use the open telemetry collector. What your choices are for these third-party sources don't have to be Grafana products. If you don't, we hope you will use our products. But if you want to push to Prometheus or uh, to Jaeger or anything else that can support traces, you're free to do so. But this is just a, a demo. Um, and eventually, after I've booted everything up into my cluster, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some. Uh, I don't know. It's this a blog post application like a little tool written in go that can you can suppose you can put the various posts so we're gonna simulate somebody opening up various pages of this blog and you can see the things um i've set up here to to hit sounds good sounds good let's, all right let's see if we can do this so uh, i've opened three windows because you're gonna need a little bit of uh stuff here so <laughs> um I'm going to do a kind, which is a. So I'm going to create a little Kubernetes cluster here. Um, so wait until that starts up. Uh, so that started. All right. So what I have here, so um, into my, in this folder is the same thing that we're showing you there. What I can show you is my credentials because I. <laughs> Uh, to run this demo, uh, I should be really careful about not to touch the file. Uh, so we have a credentials template in our demo. So I'm going to show you that. Um, so we can do something like this. And you can see, well, essentially, I've, I've created a, a free account in Grafana um, where I, I'm able to get these endpoints uh, for my tempo. What is my tempo user? I've created a Grafana API key. Um, so we give you a template where you can just do this yourself, like open a free Grafana account, um, get this information, and you're set to go. Once you plug it in, that's all you really need to get this demo working. So in here, I'm just going to do kubectl um, fly-f, and so it starts with 01. This is my credentials now. 
So I'm not using the template. I'm using the ones that I've actually um, added. And so then I'm going to deploy this agent. So So we got a Grafana agent. So let's see what's happening here. So I'm going to start K9s over here, hopefully with the screen. Yeah, so it's starting. So I have a typical Kubernetes system here. Uh, and now, so far, I have my Grafana agent running. We can see its log. Nothing special about this. Um, that's as good as it gets. So maybe I can extend the screen like this a little bit so we can see more things. Um, OK, so now that I've started the Grafana agent, I'm going to launch, I'm going to add the application. So this instrumented app. So like we said this instrumented app application has two containers. One is this gold block service written by Mario, and the other one is Bela, which is going to instrument the service. So we can see what's going on here in this Kubernetes system. So uh, we've got a gold block. Um, so Bela is running, um, it's printing various messages, and we have the Go blog. All right, <clears throat> everything's up and running. So, so far the demo is working. Um, so I forward forward. So I'm going to forward this port <clears throat> here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose this port now to my internal port 8443 for this service, the Go blog. Um, to my machine, so let's try that. Okay, seems to be doing something. <laughs> and let's I'm gonna open the some logs. <laughs> yeah, so let's see, I'm gonna open this. So Bela is printing various messages it's in debug mode, so it's looking for various executables that launch on my system here, it's not important. So we're here, uh, I'm in the same folder, I think, yeah. So I'm gonna run that load gen, that should be K6. <laughs> and and it's running all this stuff in the background. We don't want to watch that, so I'm just gonna close that off. But maybe zoom this, and now you can see that Bela is tracking various calls that this little program is making in the back, right? Um, so we're printing on the screen here. Uh, we can see the Gold Block service getting all these things uh, as a as a load. Um, and at the same time, Bailey is tracking everything that's happening, right? We track the time it took for each of those requests. Um, and so it's kind of interesting I want to point out. So we, we have two times over here, right? So one is this millisecond thing. The other one is this microsecond. I'll get back to that. I'll explain a little bit about that as well. Uh, but for now, let's just say we're tracking all these requests. <clears throat> So now, hopefully, I can open my screen here. I want to switch to Grafana to show you how this works. So this is my Grafana Cloud account, uh, where I have my traces here. So here's my tempo. So I open and explore. So if I run query, maybe not the last six hours. My query search. Let's see. Run. And here we go. So. In here, I see all these events appearing. So you notice how, like we, so we have a specific trace, and this trace, I, I, we have all the events collected. We have various attributes picked up by Bela. We know that what was the server port, what was the full URL path, and then we know that we get it was a GET request. So. Now it's interesting, you, you see this thing that we, we did here. So for HTTP route, we don't have the full URL path, um, but we have this static with a star. So Bela recognizes, it has a mode where we automatically recognize paths and reduce the cardinality so that when these metrics get generated in something like Prometheus, you don't pay a lot. So we try to reduce the cardinality so you don't get a cardinality explosion and make your queries slow and expensive. Um, so if you see over here, I talked about this uh, timing thing um, where we had this two times. So Bela is able, because it's doing this at the level of the, at the kernel, if you will, and tracking the goal runtime, we're able to 
tell when the request actually started for real. So it's expect, accepting data and it's booting up inside the Go runtime. And we're also able to distinguish that from the time it took to process the request. Um, and why these times are different. So whenever you have a Go application, uh, it internally has these Go routines which run every request, if you will, if every HTTP request. Now these Go routines need a kernel or application thread, if you will, um, to run that on. So it takes a bit of time for this request to set up. If you are instrumenting just the time your application took inside the Go handler, you will see only this time, the processing time. You don't see this time it took in queue for this request to be served by your application. So with Bela, we can get really much richer information, something closer to what the client is experiencing, not just the time it took for your handler to run, but how much it took for the Go runtime to wake up and actually be able to serve this request. So just like I'm having my um, uh, a view of my traces here, I can switch to Prometheus over here. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. And I can just, uh, I guess I have to select the metric. Um, so we, we capture many metrics. For example, we capture duration seconds. And um, we can see what that looks like. And we see the various routes. And as the application is running, we know that this particular one, which is, I guess, entry is the slowest one. Um, so all this automatically happened without any intervention on the developer side, right? There's no particular thing. And we reduce the routes to something that is low cardinality. So we really have only five routes where the application was doing a lot more. Like if we see that script that Mario has, it has all these things, right? So we collapse everything that has entry that potentially could cause cardinality explosion under something that's automatically detected as not a low cardinality route. Um, and finally, this, what we produce here is fully compatible with our application observability. So, if we go into Grafana application observability, uh, we should be able to, after I refresh the page, see our global service here. Oh, not yet. Last five minutes. Oh, actually remove this. Let's see. Refresh. And there we go. So, so we have GoBlog application here, and this is our application observability plugin tracking all the requests. Um, or any particular route that we have. And so <clears throat> since we capture a little bit of information here, this may not actually be the full um, output that you would see from manual instrumentation, but it does have enough information to go on. I, I think uh, we'll be able to see some traces. So most of these things will just work for the Stuff. What doesn't work is the service map, and I'll get to that in a second. You won't be able to see, able to see some data here um, because we don't have that yet, but it's coming soon. 